It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Dury University head shotgun coach, Coach Kevin Boyer. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in coaching in shotgun? Well, I'll give you a little backstory on me. I've been in, uh, I was in public education for over 30 years, and I've coached everything from junior high girls track to you know, whatever. And, and, uh, I have two sons, um, and I have a good friend of mine. It was on the shot. It was a shotgun shooter. And while I was coaching at our local high school, he approached me about helping, helping him start a trap shooting team. So, and I had always been outdoorsman and shot myself or so on uh, and so on. So we started to be our 12 years ago, we started a uh, high school trap junior high and high school trap shooting team out at our school with her uh, with the backing of our school and our community and it had a lot of success so that's how i got into the shooting sports my forte is uh track and field and, and cross country i'm an old distance coach uh teacher and and so on but so i'm an odd combination a uh, history teacher track coach cross country coach everything else coach and shot now shotgun coach i have been coaching shotgun for 12 years of course what was it like going to the university of Derry? Well, I started out, uh, I was still working full-time at uh, Logan Rogers was the school I was at, and uh, I was doing this part-time, and I retired a year ago, May, and uh, I came on board uh, full-time here at Drury, so now my duties are not only coaching the shotgun team, but my title is I'm an associate AD over the non-NCAA sports, you know, earlier you mentioned lacrosse, and so I'm over lacrosse, rugby, bass fishing, and so on. There's 12, we have 12 non-NCAA sports. Of course, what is that like, obviously, being over all those 12 non, non-Olympic non sports along with coaching shotgun? Well, you know, it's, it's been a lot of fun, real, uh, a lot of fun, and, and we have a great staff, and we've added six new sports. This coming season, we'll start competing. We have some kids on campus right now getting ready for the season. So it's been fun, uh, a lot of fun. You know, in my coaching background, like I said, I was in public education for over 30 years. I've coached all kinds of different sports. I came from a small school or you just, you had to coach whatever they needed you to. So I've coached everything from, you know, girls basketball to cross country and everything in between. So, uh, and then I was also an administrator. I was an assistant uh, principal and middle school AD. So all of it kind of, uh, you know, bridged right over to my job now. So it's been a good, it's been a good transition, a good fit. What was that like, obviously, getting to coach on the high school level at Logan Rogersville? Well, I enjoyed it. We're a small uh, rural community. We are uh, east of Springfield, Missouri, down in southwest Missouri. Uh, pretty small school. Our, our high school is around 7, 750, so not real big. So it's a very close-knit community, very uh, very supportive of their uh, education and their, and their schools and their athletic team. So you know, I was blessed to be there for all my 30 years, and uh, my wife still teaches there, and we're still very close. We live in the community, so it was a lot of fun. And uh, My two sons went through school there, so I was able to uh, coach them uh, in cross-country and track as well. Uh, my daughter lives in distant uh, northwest Arkansas, so she's close as well. So uh, it's kind of that northern Rockwell community, so we, uh, we've had a lot of fun. What was that like getting to start up that shotgun team from the ground up and winning three national championships during your time? Yeah, it was, uh, we were blessed. You know, we had a lot of, again, a lot of support from the community and the school. And some people were like, hey, you know, we, you know, you throw public schools and guns in the same sentence. And there's a lot of uh, reticence on the, some people's part. But our school was supportive of that. And they realized, hey, it's an Olympic sport. And uh, it is, that's what it is. It's a sport. And they treated our kids as athletes. You know, they recognized them at, uh, let's say, uh, the halftime of the football games. They put their trophies in the trophy cases. Uh, the Monday morning announcements, they would include them. We were included in the yearbook. So they really treated our kids like any other sport. They recognize that 
you know, you don't have to be the traditional stick and ball athlete to, to be successful. You know, so we had a lot of kids uh, uh, that had a lot of success, went on to shoot in college and, and, and made a lifetime sport out of it because uh, we gave them that opportunity. You know, and uh, this kids that won a national championship on the uh, shotgun team always telling me, you know, you'll always be a national champion. You know, it's, uh, you, they can't take you away from that, take that away from you just because it wasn't in a traditional type sport. And our sport's very difficult. You know, uh, we shoot between 100 and 200 targets in a competition. Uh, for example, uh, uh, we had a young man that was runner up in the uh, ski competition. Well, it's my son, but he's 99 out of 100. They had another boy that was 199 out of 200 and it was second. So you have to almost be perfect in our sport to be able to uh, be not be successful, but to, to win a gold medal. So it's much more difficult than what people think. They think you just point a shotgun and pull the trigger and good things happen. And we hope for that, but it doesn't always happen that way. How is that like, obviously, as you said, being a three-time national championship coach? Well, you know, I, I always try to remain humble about that. It was, um, it's not about me. It's about those kids that's pointing the shotgun. You know, you give, give them the right tools and not all uh, – shotgun's not a shotgun. You have to give them the right tools. Obviously, uh, liking it to golf, you know, I don't know how tall you are, but I'm about 6'2", so if you're – shorter than I am or taller than I am, we're going to need different golf clubs. And this is the way it is with shotguns. You know, your gun fit, the way your shotgun fits you is much more different than it is to the next person. So we were lucky. We uh, we had the parents and the kids and we got them the right tools and, and uh, the right coaching and and uh, we're able to put it together. And it was a lot of fun. You know, our last national championship in 2020 was the big one. It was the, they call it the singles championship that they uh, aimed grand national and I don't know how many schools we beat for, to be honest, there's 38 states represented, but we won. We broke a 985 out of 1,000 targets with our team. There's five five members of, uh, of a squad. So very proud of that. My youngest son was on that. And there was one thing that's special about our team is uh, the Wildcat Trap was what it is from Logan Rogersville. They're all from the same school. You know, some of the teams we beat, beat were – basically all-star teams with five or five kids from all over the state of Texas or Oklahoma and our, all of ours are Wildcats and they came from our school. So, you know, it was very, very special with that. What was that like making that big jump from obviously coaching in high school for shotgun and then coming to college and coaching college athletes in shotgun? Uh, really, it's the coaching aspects, not much different, you know, you're coaching kids, you know, and I've always said that I was able to coach track and field at the college level one year. And, uh, you know, you're coaching kids, it doesn't matter if you're 19 year old kids or 12 year old kids, you're still teaching them and, and help helping them mold them into a young adult. Uh, the only difference is most of the kids, not most, but all the kids that come here to shoot for me, they've already had that fundamentals laid and they already had that experience where you know, you take some junior high kid that's just, you know, a seventh grade kid that's 12 or 13 years old, it's never shot competitively, and that takes a while to mold them. Now, the biggest challenge is coming to the high school level, like I mentioned, at the, I mean, excuse me, at the college level, at the high school level, like I mentioned, we usually shoot just one discipline. Uh, at the college level, we shoot all three. We shoot trap, we shoot ski, we shoot sporting plays, and three other events. So most high school kids only shoot one discipline, Usually in Southwest Missouri or the Missouri area is trap and South, a lot of a skeet or sporting clay. But to get somebody that's diverse in all three is very difficult. So that's the biggest challenge we have at the uh, collegiate level is teaching them all the games. It's kind of obvious liking it to, you know, we bring in a shortstop and then we have to teach them to play first base, third base, and catcher, and out in five other positions. And really it's baseball, but you you know, we all know that. Hey, a third base is a little different than right field or catching is a little bit different than second base. So that's the way it is with shotgun sports. You know, you can you can point a shotgun and pull the trigger at a trap target, but it's different than a skeet target, sporting play target. So that's the biggest challenge we have at the college level. What does the typical game day competition look like for Dury Shotgun? Well, most of our competitions are uh, – the national competition is three days long. Uh, most competitions uh, during the during the regular season will be one to two days. So, for example, um, we host a, a very large uh, shotgun event here 
uh, shotgun shoots and uh, one day you'll shoot sporting clay and five stand, which is a different different variation of the game. And then one day you'll shoot trap and, uh, and ski. So in two days, you'll shoot 350 targets. You know, that's the biggest difference too, is that people think about shotguns. You know, they think about grandpa's quail gun that he may have shot 300 times in the life of it. And, you know, we're going to shoot more than that in one weekend. So it's a, it's a, it's a different game and different gun. It's a different, uh, than standing in your backyard just playing. You know, it's a competitive sport. Of course, how do you prepare those athletes? As you said, some days it's a one to two day, but sometimes it's a three day competition. How do you prepare those athletes to be durable for three days long? Well, the biggest uh, the biggest thing is is focus, obviously, and then uh, and then the next thing would be your vision. You know, that your eyes have to be be perfect on every shot, so to speak. But your eyes are muscle, so it's going to be fatigue. So. You know, even though you may physically be able to go out and shoot five or six hundred rounds in a day, your muscles, your eye muscles won't allow you to do that, not at a very good level. So, you know, we train, we uh, we train practice twice a week. We shoot a couple hundred targets a week or more. Uh, we're lucky we have, um, you know, facilities here and some people that can help us. Uh, we go down to Bass Pro Shops shooting range, uh, the shooting academy, we're able to use it uh, so, you know, really just practice like any, any other sport, you know, we, and we break it down. We just don't go out and shoot. We break down, we have some drills that we do work on the fundamentals and work on certain target presentations. And, you know, a lot of people think, so, hey, we just go out and shoot, but it's people that do it serious like we do. It's, it's much more regimental than just going out and shooting. Who are some of the college teams that you face each week in the shotgun shooting? Say it again, Brandon. I'm sorry. Who are some of the teams that you face each week? Well, um, we shoot by uh, you know we'll shoot uh, every other week or so. You know it's a pretty expensive sport, so we're not able, able to go every week. But in uh, in Missouri, we are lucky. We have several colleges that offer shooting. Uh, Lindenwood University in St. Charles, Missouri, is uh, is a pretty old powerhouse nationwide. Uh, they've won 15 national championships. Uh, there's St. Charles up the road about three hours from us, Missouri Valley, uh, Missouri S&T, Hannibal LaGrange, uh, uh, Sedalia, Sedalia has State Fair Community College. So there's some other schools in Missouri, but even around the surrounding states, we're down in the southwest corner. So we travel over to Oklahoma. Oklahoma State has a nice shoot that they put on each, uh, each spring that we go to. University of the Ozarks in Arkansas has one. So uh, and you travel up to Kansas, and, and, and uh, we're going to Wichita State has to shoot this this fall where we go to. So in the surrounding regional area, there are several schools and opportunities to go to. Our uh, national championships this year, there are going to be two offered this year, one's in uh, San Antonio and one's in Las Vegas. And they're a big, huge complex and, and huge shoot. There'll be, you know, there'll be a thousand kids there. So Collegiate shooting to get on, kind of get off track a little bit. Collegiate shooting, the championships are determined by your class that you're in, and the class you're in is determined by how many participants you have on your team. For example, Lindenwood is a small 2A, well, they just went 1A, but they've been 2A school, uh, but they'll have 30 to 40 competitors. Uh, some school like, big school like Alabama, for example, they have a club team, they may only have 10 or 12 kids. So they break it up uh, really fairly by your classification about how many kids are participating on your team at the national championships. Of course, as you talk about that, do you, do you face a lot of teams like in different, comp, different leagues? So like how Alabama could be a club and Lyndon won a division one school. Well, in, in collegiate shooting is a non NCAA sport, like we've talked about. <clears throat> so, some schools like Missouri, uh, Missouri University of Missouri has a club team. It's ran by the students, it's ran by, uh, they have a faculty representative that is not a coach. Uh, Dury University, I'm the full-time coach. We give uh, scholarships, academic scholarships, shooting scholarships. We also provide the ammunition targets, transportation, and things like that. So we treat here at Drury Shotgun Sports as a varsity sport. And so it's we're getting the backing like any NCAA sports. Lindenwood's the same way. Missouri Valley's the same way. Hannibal's the same way. 
um, Oklahoma State, I mentioned them. They have a great shooting club, and it's ran by the kids and a faculty member, but they, you know, they'll have 25 or 30 kids on their team. University of Ozarks down in, in Arkansas, uh, it's a it's a varsity sport. So you'll have a hodgepodge when you get to nationals. Uh, most successful shooting teams are funded by the university and, uh, and it's treated as a varsity sport. Can you talk about, of course, the culture that you've built for Dury? Well, Dury's a university. You can look, you guys, is, uh, there's looking and listening out there, watching or listening out there can, can look it up and Google it. We've got about 1,400 kids. We're small, small university. Um, uh, so the culture I have built here is a family type culture. My wife's my volunteer assistant. She drives uh, to the shoots with us and stays with us. Our, my youngest son shoots for me. So we try to have a family type culture. You know, I always tell kids, if you're looking for a small university with small class sizes, a smaller team with a uh, family type atmosphere, then that's what we offer. You know, the culture that kids support each other. They're all hanging out together and, uh, and so on. You know, in other schools, Lindenwood is a, a good example. They have 40, 50, 60 kids on their team. Very, very successful. So it's, you know, it's just a different coaching style, different culture. Me coming from public education, I want to be involved in, in the coaching and teaching every day of the kids. And if I have too many kids, I can't do that. So, What does the recruitment process look like for those prospective student athletes looking to get into college shotgun shooting? Well, number one thing, and, and I and I preach it all the time, is your academics. You know, you have to you have to be able to get into school for one, and uh, you know the uh, requirements, and guidelines, the pathway. And some colleges are more difficult than the other. But even if you get into the school, there's a lot more money on the table with academics. There's a lot of academic scholarships that are available. Shotgun shooting, you know. Uh, there's no full ride shotgun scholarships. There's not even any 50% shotgun scholarships, but like a jury, for example, we can package together. If you have good academics, you got a good SAT, uh, ACT score, good GPA, class rank, things like that. We can package together and, and help you. But if you have a very low GPA, very low test scores, your pathway is more difficult and the scholarships available are diminished severely. What does the unofficial visit slash official visit look like for Dury for shotgun shooting? Well, it depends on when you come, but the, normally we come and we have a campus tour that we, they they go on and and uh, and uh, then they meet with me and they meet some of the teammates and stuff. It's a little bit different than NCAA. Uh, you know, one our guidelines are a little bit different, but uh, you know, as far as flying people in or paying for recruiting meals and all the other stuff that NCAA school can do, I mean NCAA sport can do. Uh, most schools don't do that, you know, uh, not for the non-NCA sports. So we'll get you here on campus and, and, and take care of the important stuff. We're going to meet with your advisor and meet with your academic uh, field, you know, a professor or a dean of students or someone like that, and then uh, meet with your family. Then I would come in and meet with the, with the uh, prospective uh, student athlete and financial aid and stuff like that. So, yeah. Of course, in shotgun shooting, is all the guns provided by the school or do kids, do prospective student athletes bring their own shotgun to use? Yeah, they have to bring their own gun. We don't provide any guns and we they wouldn't want to anyway, because, again, it's all personalized. You get a guy that, you know, my shotgun is going to be different than somebody else's. So it's going to be very personalized. And it's kind of that old, obviously, shiving forward question, you know, one brand of guns. Uh, one kid may like, the other kid may not like it. So, uh, you know, if, if, if they have student athletes on our team, we have about five or six different manufacturers uh, represented. Uh, we do provide uh, ammunition. We uh, Fioki ammunition is made in Ozark, Missouri, just down the road about 20 minutes. We shoot their ammunition. Uh, we have a private gun club north of town that I'm a member of, and that's where we practice. And I mentioned Bass Pro Shop. They've been a good uh, partner of ours, uh, Johnny Morris, the founder of Aspro, is a Drury alum. So uh, we've been able to work with them. So, but we provide everything but the shotgun, and there's no, there's no schools that I know of that's going to provide a shotgun just because one, they're they're pretty expensive, and two, it's a personalized item that you know we want to be able to go out and and, and buy and fit and give to the kid. 
Of course, what are some of the things that you look at in those prospective student athletes when on the road? Well, I'll look at their scores, of course, to see how how well they shoot. Uh, but I'll look at academics and, and citizenship, and you know, you can get a pretty good feel for a kid when you talk to them. And you know, I, I I'm not I don't want to recruit a headache, so to speak. You know, I want a kid that's going to be a good kid, a good citizen. And going to take care of uh, himself and his, and his teammate and represent me and the uh, institution well. Uh, obviously, you know the, the shotgun stuff we can teach and we can we can coach and we can help. The other stuff we want to help mold, but we don't have to. You know, we don't have to provide the mold for that, so to speak. So, uh, the academics and the quality of the kids the number one thing that I look for. To be honest, the shooting aspect of it is important, but we can. We can get that. We can get there, if that are, makes sense. So, what are some of your future plans in this in the program moving forward? Well, we're going to continue to grow our program. Not not super big, to be honest. I have twelve student athletes on my team right now, and everyone to get much bigger than about 15, 17 or so. Uh, last year in our class at national championships, we were fourth. We were just a few birds from getting on the podium. So we want to. Uh, that's that's our goal in the next uh, in, in the next couple of years, two to three years, is to get on the podium in the national championship. Um, and when I was part time, it was difficult to recruit, meet recruits, and do all the stuff that you needed to do. But now that I'm on campus on full time, it's it's much easier. And um, you know, we've got some quality kids on our team, and we have some quality kids coming in, and, uh, and they're all pretty good shooters. So we hope to continue that. You know, you never know. You know, you show up in our national championships, so it's a one-time thing. So you shoot at 100 trap targets if you have a bad day and the other guys have a good day, then, you know, then the outcome's going to be different. So it's not like a playoff type, type system. It's just that, you know, it's, it's a one day you shoot a trap and ski, the next day the other disciplines and so on, that they take a cumulative score from that. What advice would you have those high school athletes that are looking to get into college shotgun shooting? I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit, Brandon. What advice would you have those high school athletes looking to get into college shotgun shooting? Well, advice, same advice I would give any student athlete when I coached at the high school level and I had uh, uh, cross-country runners or track and field runners that were good enough to run at the next level. I would tell them to, to, to search out a school that has your, has your field, has your degree that you want to pursue. You know, like, for example, here in Missouri, uh, at Drury, we don't have engineering. So if a kid comes to me and even if it's a fantastic shot, all American kids say, hey, I want to major in mechanical engineering. I tell them, sorry, I can't help you, you know. So make sure the college fits you, not, not you know, and not not regret that later on. Because so far I've not co coached a kid that's going to make a living shooting a shotgun. But I've coached a lot of good kids that are going to be, I have one in law school right now. I have another one that's getting their master's in and uh, in uh, mathematics, and that's just the college level at the high school level. Uh, you know, my dentist is a former, former student of mine, so, and he was a great football player, all-state wrestler, state champion wrestler, but he's a dentist, <laughs> you know. So I would tell you that, uh, tell any kid, to pursue a college that fits them overall, not just in one, not just in one area. What advice would you have those college students that are looking to go from being a shotgun shooter to making a U.S. team, whether it's the U.S. team or Olympic team? Yes, the U.S., uh, the games that we shoot are different than the Olympic games. You know, you mentioned you're going to have an Olympic shooter on uh, next week. What uh, that young lady shoots is different than what we shoot here at college. It's a different game. The Olympic shotgun games are different, uh, and we don't shoot them here at the college level. A lot of the Olympic shooters come from, from the military through the military, I have a good friend that was the coach of Linda Wood. He was a uh, he was an Olympian. Uh, he's an international skeet shooter, and he came through the Army marksmanship team as well. Uh, Olympic shooting is called international shooting. If you want international bunker, uh, the like the international trap, the Olympic trap is totally different than the trap game that we shoot, and it's the same way with the ski. So, uh, I would tell those kids to seek out someone that knows the international games and knows the Olympic games and, um, and pursue it through that route. Uh, for example, for us, if I, even if I, my, my son, for example, if he wanted to shoot a, uh, Olympic bunker trap or closest trap, Olympic bunker trap fields in St. Louis about three hours away. 
So it'd be, it makes it very difficult, obviously. What advice would you give those college coaches that are looking to get into coaching shotgun, whether they're head coaches or even coaching in shotgun? Yeah, you know, I like I say, I was a coach, but I had never coached uh, shotgun sports until a friend of mine got me into it. And I, you know, and I was at an advantage because coaching, me coaching other sports and other kids and other disciplines uh, has really helped me to be able to teach the game. Uh, even though I was not a, a fantastic shooter, I, I didn't shoot on a college team or something like that, I was able to take my coaching skills, my coaching knowledge, and, uh, and, and make me successful through that measures. A lot of self-taught, a lot of clinics, a lot of things like that. So I would tell any coach, whether they're at the, regardless of the level they are, is continue your, uh, I would say, your education of the game, education of the shotgun game, and, uh, and pursue from that. Volunteer. You know, volunteer and go get uh, the, go get involved with the youth program, the 4-H program, or your local high school or middle school program, or even the college level. You know, I have a, uh, a gentleman that helps me, a uh, uh, volunteer assistant. He actually knows more about the ski and sporting play than I do. Um, it's a great asset to our team, and he enjoys it a lot. So if you're if you're an avid outdoorsman, you're a shooter, you're a shotgun guy, you know, go get involved somewhere. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Dury Shotgun Program at? Well, you can follow us. Uh, you can go to Dury, www.dury.edu, and you can link uh, our uh, website through that. We have a Facebook page, Dury Got Shotgun Sports. So we're also on Twitter and, uh, and uh, Instagram. You can follow all, all of the follow along. And, and if you have any questions, obviously, uh, get on Dury's, uh, Dury.edu and and look me up and you can give me a call or email me for any questions or any, any, uh, any advice that uh, that you might need or may want to give. (laughs) Well, I'll take that. Thank you again, coach Kevin Boyer for your interview and best of luck in your future at Dury as the head shotgun shooter. Hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate the time to spread news about our sport. Thank you. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Kevin Boyer, for your interview. Best of luck in your future. Thank you. I appreciate it. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.